Welcome to lecture 24, while loops. So in this section, we are going to cover three types of loops. The while loop, which is in this lecture, the next lecture, which is for loops, and then followed by that is do while loops. Each of them have a slight difference in them, and, and depending on what you're trying to accomplish, um, one of the loops would probably be more appropriate. While and do while loops are extremely similar. They only differ by basically one thing, and obviously the syntax as well, because one is uses the do while word, and then the other one just uses while. But starting with the while loop, um, once again, a loop, just to generalize it, any type of loop is something that repeats some kind of action. So let's say, for example, I wanted to print the word hello to the console a number of times. It could be one, maybe a hundred, or maybe an infinite amount of times. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to use the while loop. So the syntax of the while loop is really simple. It's just the while keyword. And then inside the parentheses for the while, you put something that evaluates to a bool value, just like the if statement. Remember what the if statement, anything that evaluates to either true or false, can go inside of an if statement and many things do evaluate to that you know less than greater than is equal to is not equal to things like that can be put into there but anything that evaluates to true or false so let's just start off with um, something very simple um, let's go ahead and create an integer say int x equals one and I'm gonna say while x is greater than zero now this is true right because one is greater than zero so I'm saying while X is greater than zero repeat this action so inside of the block now the same thing applies like if statement if you have a block that allows you to put multiple statements inside of that um, container so with the while loop if I have a block I could put multiple statements that will all execute every single time the while loop um, executes however if I don't put a block only the first statement following the while loop will be a part of the while loop. So I always put blocks. Um, so I'm just going to put console.write line hello in here because I just want to print the, the hello. Now, when I run this, something weird is going to happen. It's actually going to repeat hello forever. So let's go ahead and see what I mean by that. And as you can see, it keeps on saying hello, hello, and this will do it forever. Um, the reason why this is happening is because this statement, while x is greater than 0, is always true. Basically, what happens with the while loop, it says, okay, it starts here. Is x greater than or equal to 0? So, basically, it says, is 1 greater than 0? Yes, that, that is true. So, I come into the body of the loop, and I execute the code. Okay, I execute hello. Now, it hits the end of the loop, and it goes back up. It loops back around, so it comes back around, and then says, okay, let me evaluate it again. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes, it is. Once again, it is. So then I execute my code. It ends. It goes back. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes. So basically, it keeps on checking on that expression right here. If it is true, it will continue. So that's, so that's a loop. While it is true, it will repeat the code forever. The same exact thing as the if statement. Except the if statement, it says, if it's true, do its code only once. However, the while says, if it is true, do its code forever. So as long as its expression is true, or its condition is true, it will repeat the code forever. So this will repeat forever. This is called an infinite loop because it never ends. It's an infinite loop. So let's go ahead and fix this. And let's actually introduce the three components that are necessary for creating a loop that that uh, ends at a certain amount of time. So there are basically two types of loops, and I'm going to explain both in a little bit. There's an, a definite loop, and a definite loop is a loop that basically terminates at a set time. You know when it will terminate. You know how many times it will run. It's definite. It's like defined completely. And then there's also an indefinite loop, which I'll explain in the future, but basically an indefinite loop is a loop that you don't know when it will end. It will end eventually, but you don't know when. Basically, the user has complete control when it will end, and we will look at that here in a little bit. But let's start with, the, let's just create a simple loop that executes hello five times. So the three components we need. We need something that keeps track of how many times we've already executed. So we need some kind of variable to say, okay, this is our fifth time, fourth time, third time, whatever. It keeps track of how many times we've executed the code so far. So that will be our variable. So I'm going to say int 
x equals 0. So that means that we have not even started the loop yet. I set it to 0 because we have not executed anything yet. This job of this variable is just to keep track. It's called the loop control variable or the counter control variable. It keeps track of how many times the loop has ran. The next thing we need is actually the loop. So I'm going to say while x because I want I want to print the word hello five times. So I'm going to say while x is less than five. Now the reason why I'm putting five is there in there is because x starts at zero. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four. That's actually five. So it goes while x is less than five. That actually runs five times. Even though x will stop at four, it will actually go to five, but it won't run again. So it's zero, one, two, I'm right here. Zero, one, two, three, four. So you notice that that is five. Once it hits the fifth time, it won't ex it won't actually enter the block anymore because five is not less than five. So zero to four, so that will do it five times. Now we need the actual body. So what do we actually want to run? And like I said, I want it to print hello to the console. Now, if I ran this code, we would be in an infinite loop again because nothing is changing the X. This keeps track of how many times we've ran, but nothing is altering it. Nothing is changing it so that we know that we ran. So if I ran this again, it will still be infinite. It will never end because zero is always less than five. So what we need to do is we need to say every time the body executes, we need to increase x by 1 so that we know we, ac we actually ran that one time. So if I do x++, plus plus, that increases x just by 1. So now this is the finished product. If I run this code, we can see that it says hello five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It ran it five times and then the program ended. And that's because... Every single time it ran, x went up by 1. So, for example, the first time you go in, x is 0. Is 0 less than 5? Yes, it is. So I run this code. Then x go up by 1. So now x is now 1. Is 1 less than 5? Yes, run. Is 2 less than 5? Yes. Is 3 less than 5? Yes. Is 4 less than 5? Yes. Okay, we're at the fourth time, which is really the fifth, but we're at x is 4. Now x goes up by to 5. And then it says, is 5 less than 5? No, it's not. It breaks out. And that's where the while loop becomes false. So that at that moment, it becomes false and breaks out. So the while loop continues for as long as it's true, as long as it's false, it breaks out. So your job as a programmer is to make a loop that basically has a termination point. You want it to eventually terminate unless you do want an infinite loop, which maybe sometimes you do. But for the most part, you'll want it to terminate at some point. So you need to write the code that eventually makes the expression inside of the while loop become false. That's the job. That's all you have to do. So in my case, I wanted to print five times. So I had, I had to think of a way to make it only be true for five times. And then it becomes false and breaks out. So these are the three components you need for any basically definite loop, for any loop that runs at a certain amount of times. So we have the counter control variable. We have the condition. This is what actually does the checking to see if it should keep on running. And then you have some kind of alter statement, which alters the counter control variable because you need to alter it. Without the alter, it becomes infinite. So you need to alter it some way in order to make the, the loop terminate. So those are the three components, the variable, condition, and the alter statement. And you'll see that in the next loop, the for loop, um, there's an, it, it, basically the for loop is a shorthand for the while loop to make those three things put together really nice. And we'll look at that. So because the while loop, um, or I mean, because the for loop is designed to basically be a shorthand for the while loop, the, the for loop is basically the best candidate if you have a definite loop. So, and this is a definite loop because I, I know it's going to run five times. So the for loop is the best candidate if you have that kind of situation. The while loop shines better if you are doing something that has an indefinite loop. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. But basically, like I said before, an indefinite loop is a loop that we don't know how many times it will run by looking at the code. It's completely determined maybe by the user or some other factor. So the while loop really shines in that, whereas the for loop shines in this situation where you have, you know, Print this five times. That is what the for loop is perfect for, which we'll get to in the uh, next lecture. The last thing I want to do in this lecture is just to do an example of a definite loop using a while loop. So that's what we're going to do now. Basically, I want to build a program 
that just keeps a running total of things. Basically, I want to ask the user over and over, either enter a number or negative one to continue. So if you enter a number, it will just keep on adding it into a running total. So let's say I type in 5, then 10, then 20, 30. It will keep on adding those up together. The moment I type negative 1, boom, hit enter, the program will stop, and then it will print to me how much I added together. So if I did 5 and 5, and then negative 1, it should print 10 to me. And I can go on forever. I can add up 100 numbers if I want to. It's basically just a program that keeps a running total of numbers. So as you can see in this example, this is an indefinite loop. And I think before I said that, that we're going to do an example of a definite loop. Sorry, I meant indefinite loop. Um, so this is an example of an indefinite loop because we don't know well, while, we're programming, while we're programming it how long it will last. It's completely up to the user because he can type in 5 and then 10 and then 11 and then negative 1. And that will run three times on this loop. So we don't know that while we're programming it. It's completely up to the user. So this is an indefinite loop. We don't know when it will end. So let's start off by creating a variable to hold our running total. So I'm going to say int running total equals zero. I'll set, it, I'll set it to zero right now because there's no value in it. The next I'm going to print actually to the console as telling them what to do. So I'm going to say console that right line, enter a number or negative one to quit. So I'm going to say that. And now I need to actually read in that number. So I'm going to say int number equals console.readline. Now remember this is going to give you an error because console.readline comes in as a string. We need to convert it to an integer. So we're going to say int.parse console.readline. So now we have the number of whatever they typed in. So now with now with our loop, remember our loop is only going to run while they don't type in negative one because the moment they type in negative one we want to stop the program. So that means that any other number should keep the loop running. So to do that is we're going to say while number that numbers whatever they typed in is not equal to negative 1. So this will run for any number besides negative 1. So um, if we type in 5, 10, 15, 20, anything, it will it will keep on going except when I type in negative 1 it will break out. So if the number is not negative 1, we want to first add it to our our counter. So I'm going to say running total plus equal number. So whatever number is, it adds it to our running total. That's the first thing to do. The next thing we need to do is now simply ask them to enter another number and read it in. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to basically say it again. Console right line, enter a number or negative 1 to quit. And then I'm going to say number equals int.parse console.readline. The reason why I'm asking them again to enter a number is because we already got the first number, but now that we've entered the loop and we added that number together, we need to get a, the next number that you want to add. So we need to print enter another number, and then this basically reads in that number again. Notice how I don't see int again because it's already defined up here. I'm just overwriting the value of that variable with a new value. That's whatever typed in. So I'm not saying int again. It would be bad to say int again because then this variable, we can't use this anymore because you can't define two variables with the same name. It needs to be defined outside of the while loop because the while loop is actually using it. So it needs to be out here. So as you can see, as you type in numbers, so let's say I type in 5 first. Is 5 not equal to 1? That is true. We enter in. Running total plus equal 5. So now running total is 5. And then it says enter another number. Okay, let's say I type in 10. So now 10 gets stored into number. So now 10 is number. It comes back around. Is 10 not equal to negative 1? Oh, that's true. So now take the running total and add 10 to it, print it again. And it will keep on doing that over and over and over again until you type in negative 1. Once you type in negative 1 here, it would say is negative 1 not equal to negative 1? No, that's false. So it breaks out of the loop. Once it breaks out of the loop, it comes down here. This is where it will pick up. Once it leaves this, it goes to here. So at this point, I know that we have our total. So I'm going to simply print out our running total. So I'm going to say the total is, and I'll put in running total. So as you can see, if we run this program, 
5, enter a number, 6, 10, 20, 50, 500, 30, 44, anything. And then I type in negative 1, boom, the total is 665. So I can enter in an infinite amount of numbers if I want. It will go on forever as long as it's not negative 1. The moment I type in negative 1, that makes the while statement false, and it breaks out of the loop. So this is why this is called an indefinite loop, because the, the code doesn't know how many times it will run. It's completely up to the user. The user only knows because the user is going to type in negative 1 to actually stop the loop from running. But the program itself does not know. All the program knows is to say, if it is negative 1, then you stop running. So this is an indefinite loop versus a definite loop, which we know by the code how long it will run, basically. So that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll have for loops, which, like I said before, are a shorthand for creating while loops that are definite. So it basically creates those three components that you need, the, the counter control variable, the condition, and the alter statement, all in one small little declaration of the for loop, and it makes it really simple to creating definite loops. So anytime you have definite loops, you're going to pick the for loop.